It may be hard to believe, but we are more than halfway through 2024. And uh, that's kind of crazy. We're on the downslope of the year so far. Uh, with with the seventh month being July, we are already, you know, a lot of it has already passed us. And I wanted to take that as an opportunity, or this video as an opportunity, to talk about some things. Uh, first of all, I'm going to be taking a look at where my trading uh, has performed well and performed not so well this year. And I'm also going to show you what I think and where, more importantly, I'm positioned. Uh, trade-wise for the second half of this year, 2024. Um, so to follow up on uh, on that, we'll be taking a look at, first of all, like my trading performance. So let's go ahead and do that really quick. So what you can see here is year to date, my performance within my brokerage that I trade on Webull, which is a US regulated brokerage. And this is my personal trading performance so far this year on this, uh, this account. This is my main public account, which is up about 10% so far this year. First of all, I wanna say is not my best best year ever, but certainly not my worst one either. We're up 10%. I can't complain. Makes up about 90K on this account, which is a really good solid start. And uh, knock on wood here, but uh, so far this year, we have not had any red months, which is actually not the usual case for me. If I take a look at 2023, I had several red months. 2022 was a rough year for me. 2021, several red months and 2020 even had some red months as well. This is the all time kind of trading performance of my account. I'll show you the uh, the max PL here right there. Uh, and this account has done well over time, but I wanted to take this as an opportunity to also discuss with you guys for a moment something that I think is really important to do so. I'm holding myself accountable here at the half waypoint. Uh, my trading, I think this year has been pretty good. I've stuck to all my strategies, done what I'm always doing, which is a mix of fundamental analysis and technical analysis and managing risk tightly. It's very important to me that I'm keeping my drawdowns to a absolute minimum that's possible. Uh, but I wanted to also talk to you guys a little bit uh, for the members of the audience where you're at with your trading. I want you to take this as a moment to ask yourselves, are you making progress this year? Are you improving this year as a trader? It's very easy to let a num a num another calendar month fall off the edge and you know years can go by where you're not making progress in trading. I want to ask you, are you making it progress this year in 2024? I do also want to mention that in my videos I talk regularly about the edge finder, which is a tool that traders uh, all around the world are using to incorporate fundamental analysis into your trading. The reason I bring that up is currently we're doing a ginormous discount on it. And I know, I know another promo and get over it, Nick, it's, it's annoying and I'm not trying to be annoying, but let me tell you something really quick. This is our biggest discount that we do all year long for the edge finder, which is the tools that I personally use to generate the trading returns that I do. Now, of course I'm using my own, you know, my trading psychology and my risk management and my technical analysis in combination with the edge finder, but the tool has come a long way. And if you're somebody who watches my videos regularly, I don't want you to miss this sale. We're currently doing 50% off by using the link down below in the description. So if you'd like to get a copy, you can do so by clicking that and get the biggest discount of the entire year. Uh, the reason I bring up, you know, where are you at with your trading is so many people wait so long to get education, to get tools, to get what they need to get in order to take the right steps in the direction of being a profitable trader. If you're just struggling and going in circles and you feel like you're not making progress, I'm telling you it is worth considering either getting access to our membership group and learning something, joining our coaching calls, or getting access to tools that might help you to learn fundamentals a lot quicker and actually have resources in front of you that allow you to do so. So again, if you've thought about it in the past and you've been on the fence about getting a copy, this is the best price you'll get all year long. The link down below in the description will get you some information on that. So next up, I wanted to talk a little bit about where I am already currently positioned as we go into 2024. And I wanna talk about why and share a little bit of insight into each one. So I'm gonna pull open my, my, um, my brokerage thing here and we'll talk about all of it. So XLK, this is technology. I've had a long position on XLK since the dip that we saw in April. I got a pretty good sized position on this one and I continue to be long XLK. This is similar to the NASDAQ, but it is specifically technology companies. Um, I like technology companies because they have some of the best earnings potential in the, in the market, in the S&P 500. A lot of the gains have been made from tech. Tech has just been such a winner this year and last year, and I've been super bullish on it throughout 2023 and 2024. And, uh, you know, this this has been a, a, a staple in my account this year. It's one of the biggest winners for me. XLK and my gold trades 
have been the biggest winners. So um, I also have Bitcoin, which uh, I trade IBIT, which is a Bitcoin ETF. I'm long in this one. This one's in profit as well. Um, I took a speculative position on that uh, recently. It is a small position and full willingness that it could be very, very volatile uh, while I hold that. But I'll talk about Bitcoin in a second. I have XLE, which is energy ETF just very slightly in profit on this one. Silver, I'm slightly in the red. Gold, I'm slightly in the red. And TLT, I'm in the red as well. TLT is uh, long duration bonds. So what you could probably see from my account here is that the theme for the second half of 2024 for me is rate cuts. Now, I put out a video in the beginning of 2024 about my forecast, if you will, or my bias going into this year. And I mentioned much of the same things that I am currently long in as we speak. I mentioned at the beginning of this year, my bullish position or my bullishness on gold. I also mentioned my bullishness on technology. There's one thing missing here that I was bullish on in the beginning of the year and have since changed my mind, which is small cap stocks, the Russell, IWM, RTY, whatever you, you know, trade. I'm not bullish right now on the Russell. And uh, the reason for that is because I do think that, you know, you're probably gonna get rate cuts in the second half, which could be a bullish thing for the Russell. But what concerns me is the lack of, you know, really strong economic growth and the hurting consumer that seems to be, um, you know, kind of going through it right now. So let's talk a little bit about some of these positions and uh, let's start with gold. So gold is one that I am long. I've traded gold many times this year. I, I caught, you know, to pat myself on the back first, I've caught a lot of the upside in gold from the beginning of the year. As I mentioned, I was bullish. My year end target was 2280. 2280 got hit a long time ago. Uh, at this point, 2280 um, seemed really, really kind of a crazy uh, idea at the beginning of the year. But we shot right up to that level and have since kind of traded around it. Now, my end of the year target for this one, uh, or for, for the second half, has changed. Uh, I think that a very reasonable uh, target for the second half of the year uh, is that maybe we see 2,500. Now, of course, these are just numbers, and I'm just throwing numbers out there. At the end of the day, uh, is that a valid idea? Uh, yes or no? Well, you know, who's to say? Things could change. But right now, again, my bias is that we have upside on gold, and I'll talk about that overall. I mentioned that the labor market or, or that the economy seems to be showing some signs of cooling. And this is, I'm recording this before this week's key jobs numbers. So please, you know, bear with me on the hindsight concepts. But if we take a look at labor, generally speaking in the United States, we do see labor data starting to show signs of cooling. Unemployment claims have overall been trending to the upside and jobs data, which I don't have the latest one that will be coming out on Friday when this video does as well, you know, are, are very, very important here as well. So we'll see where that comes in. But the thing here is that unemployment rate does seem to be trending up overall. And as that does happen, I think that there is the slight concern that we could see possibly a, not recession, but a concern about the economy uh, and that rate cuts could become faster than people are thinking they might happen. So if rate cuts do happen at a rapid pace to try and you know, kind of stall the, the slowing of the economy at some point, that looks very bullish for gold and usually comes in tandem with uh, printing of money, which brings me to another thing and why I'm bullish on gold this year, which is it's an election year. And there's a lot of question marks, as I made in my recent video, I believe on Wednesday, a lot of question marks about who's going to be the president, and what those things will entail for the financial markets. But that question mark by itself, to me, is enough of a reason to be slightly more bullish gold than not uncertainty in the financial markets, whether it be geopolitics or local politics like in the US now, um, so on and so forth, are generally speaking a bullish thing for uh, things like the VIX and things like gold where you get big uncertainties. So I do lean to the bullish side. If this does uh, stop out, you know, I have, a, I have a stop on this trade on my GLD position. I'll show you that now. Um, if gold stops out here, then I will take the loss. I'll move on from this idea. But what I'd be looking for this second half of the year is uh, if we see continued slowdown in the economy uh, or, or if we actually start to get slowdown in the economy, like some real tangible slowing, um, 
as well as money printing kind of persisting, I, I like the idea of looking for higher lows and higher highs. So even if I get stopped out on this one, I may still look for an opportunity for that bullish trend to continue. But currently at the time of recording this, again, pre-NFP, I don't know what's gonna happen with NFP. I like this area as long as it holds. If it doesn't, I stop out and I move on from this idea. Now, I mentioned technology and uh, this is one that I've been in for some time. XLK is a technology ETF that looks very similar to the NASDAQ. This trade has gone very well for me. I bought it in the dip in uh, April of this year when we had uh, a bit of a, a bit of a sell off there. Uh, technology really slipped and slid lower um, and I bought XLK at that time. Uh, what I thought was a support level went a little bit lower, but tagged this support XLK uh, did so on the daily chart here right around this 193 level and uh, has continued to push higher now. Uh, so what I've done is I've actually trailed a stop on this one. So you can see market structure here. I put a stop just below that. So if price does break this, I'll be trailed out for a profit on this position. But I do like the upside for technology, uh, either president who becomes, you know, the president, uh, Trump or Biden. Um, I They both have a track record of spending a lot of money and I think they also both will want to see, you know, rate cuts. I don't know how much power they have on that, but regardless, uh, you know, spending of money um, could be strong for the stock market. And one area of the stock market that will likely lead if it continues to go higher is technology. So I like to continue to have uh, exposure to tech. And um, that is why it is, uh, again, my one of two sectors that I'm currently long on. Let's talk about the second one. The second sector that I have a position on is energy. And this one is just a trade here for me, but I liked the break of this downward structure that we were seeing. I bought the pullback and uh, I do have a stop loss on this one too. So again, this is pre NFP. It'll be a couple days before this video gets uploaded. If price gets stopped out, no worries. I am looking for pop, you know, uh, even if this happens, right, I'm looking for possibilities of continuing to try and buy XLE, which is an energy ETF that I like. Now, I also mentioned Bitcoin, which is a very speculative position. And I'll tell you why. If we do see a second half that is strong for the stock market, and usually when you get a big first half of the year that is strong for the stock market, you get a second half that is also strong. We may not see the same sort of numbers that we saw in the first half, but if we see a positive continued bull market for stocks, I think it spills over into the crypto world. It already kind of has, uh, but if we see continuation in risk on or risk appetite, Bitcoin is an interesting one because it really is further out on the risk curve. It's higher risk, higher reward. But if you see a NASDAQ that keeps going higher, see a stock market that rips higher this for the rest of this year, um, you know, Bitcoin could stand to do very, very well in that environment. And I also love the technology for the long term myself. It is a small but speculative position. I am fully aware that Bitcoin you know, could completely crash tomorrow. And um, I don't control that. And it is a speculative position. Uh, I am not, you know, putting my whole life savings on Bitcoin or anything like that. I do have a stop on this idea. But if it gets stopped out, I will probably look to try again at lower levels like the 52,000 mark. And this is very subject to economic data in the United States, um, as well as to the global economy situation, a good global economy, a, you know, uh, a fertile crescent economy globally would be great for Bitcoin and a rough global recession would be terrible for Bitcoin, in my opinion. You may make the case the super crypto bulls might say, well, Nick, no, you're wrong about that because when it all falls out of the sky, people are going to look to Bitcoin as a safe haven. Maybe, maybe in the future, but I don't see that right now. Right now, I see Bitcoin trading essentially as a leveraged version of the NASDAQ. Uh, it is almost like unprofitable technology stocks like ARK Invest, right? Uh, there's a lot of there's a lot of correlation here to this part of the market, which is uh, Kathy Wood's um, innovation ETF, which is a lot of unprofitable technology companies that could change the world if we get a perfect, sweet, fertile uh, grounds to, to grow stocks in, right? But that's not always what we get. So same thing with Bitcoin. It requires, in my view, a very you know, um, rainbows environment in order to really prosper. But if you do get that rainbows environment, you get these ginormous runs. So I like the upside potential for, for Bitcoin. I think we might see if the economy hangs in there this year, Bitcoin might do incredibly well.
TLT is another trade. This has been a position trade for me, just a portion of my account dedicated to uh, TLT, which will benefit greatly if yields come down this year, if we get rate cuts this year. Uh, TLT, whether the economy hangs in there or not, if the economy you know, starts to cool and inflation starts to come down, TLT could look very, very good. But yields have been very, very high recently. Um, the Fed is expected to cut rates this year. And if that happens, yields could trend lower, which would, again, be inversely very good for TLT. So we'll see. But this is uh, another position that I have on with the expectation that the Fed will cut rates this year. Now, please note, this is also, be, I've said this many times, but it is being recorded pre-NFP this week, which is a huge data point. Unfortunately, I'll be out of town, so I can't record this video after NFP. But I wanted to talk about the uh, Fed Watch tool because I keep mentioning this rate cut expectations. Well, where am I getting it from? Well, the CME Group has a 63% uh, chance at the time of recording this, which will be changed by NFP, uh, rate expectation like 63 uh let's call it 70 percent almost percent chance that we will see our first rate cut uh after the uh, at the 18th of september meeting um and so by december there is a very high chance only a five percent chance that we won't have seen our first rate cut so i do think there's a solid probability that we get our first rate cut we also see other central banks around the world cutting interest rates that brings me to the dollar by the way just for a moment i do think that the dollar could continue to squeeze higher as the u.s growth has been stronger than other countries so the u.s dollar may see some further upside in the short term but i think it's limited because yes the u.s dollar might strengthened because of relative outperformance compared to its European peers. But I think that that's upside is limited because the US economy is also showing some signs of cooling off. The consumer is showing signs of weakening. And if that does kind of continue, the dollar may short term outperform. But I do think that there's not some ginormous skyrocket for the US dollar coming. That would entail likely that rate hikes are coming back. If that were to happen, that's probably what would get the dollar to do that. And I don't personally see that happening this year. Let's also take a quick moment to look at the commitment of traders data as a bit of a checkpoint here this year. Gold Gold, oil, silver, these are still very heavily bought by institutional money on a percentage or per, uh, on a kind of position ratio basis. Now, institutional money being very long, these things, they're also very short, these things, treasuries, um, Russell, the Canadian dollar, JPY, and CHF. I mentioned being bearish on the Russell. I am still kind of hesitant. I would love to buy the Russell uh, if we get some growth metrics coming back in. I will be looking for that in the second half if something changes. If we see, you know, a rebound in uh, or, or kind of continued strength in the labor market, but also inflation continues to cool, that would probably get me to buy the Russell. So I'll be looking for that. Also worth noting is the latest uh, data here from the AAII Investor Sentiment Survey. This asks participants, how bullish or bearish or neutral are they on the stock market? And recently, this is something to be a little bit concerned about. We've seen uh, pretty high levels of bullishness in recent months. Uh, so, you know, 44.5% bullish, 27.2% neutral, and 28.3% bearish on the stock market. So that is worth mentioning. I do understand that the stock market has had a really good year so far, and there will probably be some sharp pullbacks in the second half, especially with an election. I think it's pretty, pretty likely that we do see some volatility in the coming six months. I hope this video was helpful to you and just walking you through kind of my thoughts for the second half of this year. Please understand that none of this is financial advice. I could be completely wrong on some of these ideas. Ideas, I could be very right. So far, this year has been pretty good for me, um, and uh, I hope to kind of have a good second half to continue the the uh, the gains this year. Let's see if we can do it. Also, I mentioned this earlier, but if you guys are interested in getting access to the Edge Finder, it is currently half off right now. You get all that information using the information down below on this video. So don't miss it. Get access to the tools we're using to analyze the markets. Thank you guys very much for tuning into this video. We'll see you next time. If you're looking to improve as a trader, we've got some cool free resources here that I wanted to share as we close today's video. Down below in the description, there is a link to join our Discord channel or our Telegram channel. And we also have our website, a1trading.com, where traders can get access to free course material to help you improve as a trader. Remember, we are also live Monday through Friday on this channel around 9.30 a.m. US Eastern, broadcasting most live news events and that sort of thing. So hope to see you there. And also we do have a couple videos here showing up on the screen. If either of these seems like it might be helpful to you, then make sure to click here or here and we'll see you there.